welcome to Reduction Lino Cut with me, Joe Bristow, artist printmaker and owner at Ikigai Printmaking. I know that there are different ways you've probably arrived here with me on this workshop. If you have purchased a printmaking kit and are using this workshop as a way to further your experience, welcome and you will probably recognise some of the products we are going to use today. If you would like to purchase a printmaking kit or just a few supplies, I will drop the links in the details. So during this online workshop, we are going to be looking at taking our lino cut knowledge a step further by exploring reduction lino cut. To do this, we are taking inspiration from this book of ukiyo-e. Ukiyo-e is a genre of Japanese art from 17th, 18th and 19th centuries. Often the artists would have a printmaker produce wood blocks that were then printed using water-based inks. That technique is known as mokyohanga, similar to western woodcut, um, but differs due to the extensive blocks used for one print um, in mokyohanga. And in western woodcut, oil-based inks are generally used. The design we are working on today is a 1915 woodblock design by Ohara Koson. It is a three color design and instead of using multiple pieces of lino, we will be reducing one lino block with each color we want to print. So let's get started by looking at the tools we're going to use. There's quite a few versions out there of the tools I'm going to use in this workshop. But for this session, I'm going to use a combination of U and V gouges from the starter set. <clears throat> as their namesake suggests, the blades are shaped as a U or V. And these will be the tools you'll probably use the most in lino cutting. These file lino cut gouges are very popular with lino cut artists, um, mainly due to the mushroom handle and the fact that they come in um, quite fine blade sizes. Tools for lino and those specifically for wood are interchangeable, but for the longevity of your tools, you might want to consider only using lino cut tools on lino and wood cut tools can be used on both. Another tool I am going to use in this um, is this Japanese hangito. It's much like a Western scalpel blade, but made from high quality two part steel. Um, users of the lino cut kit will find one in the starter tools. Most are right handed, but because I'm left handed, I have this one. So to save time, I've started to sketch out our design on this piece of A5 grey hessian back lino. I lightly sanded the surface to remove any bumps and to encourage a good ink transfer. If you find your lino is stiff, you can leave it somewhere warm to make it easier to carve. In reduction lino cut, <clears throat> you tend to include the colour of your paper um, in your colours. So where I've described this image as a three colour print, that is the white, the yellow and the black. So what I'm doing here is I'm carving away all the white areas so that when we lay down the yellow ink onto the lino, the white areas um, will become white of the paper. So using a V-cut tool, whether that's a, uh, if you have file tools or the smallest of your Vs in the kit, you want to be making these line edges um, towards the edges of where you want to carve everything away. Uh, you can do that with a hangito and I'll, I'll show that as well, or you can uh, use the V-cut. So you can use the U-cut, uh, one of the smallest ones, if that's all you've got. Um, you just have to be a little bit more careful because the, the U can tend to scoop rather than make a line. And what you're wanting to do is create a trench so that as you're carving away, then your trench will catch your tool and you're less likely to um, accidentally go over those edges. If you've joined us for beginner's liner cut at any point, um, you'll recognize uh, that I am positioned on a slip mat. Um, I will hold the tools away from me, um, specifically not towards my other hand. I do tend to put a finger down on the top of my tool, uh, part of the guiding process, but also to apply a little bit of pressure. Um, I would like to see some of these dark edges a bit more so I'm going to colour those in a bit as I go. Um, you'll see 
that I'll color in the areas where I don't want to carve um, and then I'm easily rubbing those out when I come to print. Um, so this section down here is sort of like that black bit on the branch that you can see. Um, because there's a slight bit of white there, I want to differentiate between the, the dark and the white. Um, for that, because it's quite a small bit of white, I'm going to use uh, quite a, a small tool, definitely the, the V tool for that section. I've switched to voiceover so that I can speed up um, the video and chat a little bit about what's happening in the video. Um, I tend to carve quite slowly, so we'll be here for hours <laughs> if I um, talk and carve at the same time. Um, so I have put a trench there with the V-cut tool and with this U, small U tool, I am going inside those trench areas um, and then switching over to a larger a U tool uh, to take away more of that um, lino in the middle. I don't have to be very um, careful in this middle bit. Um, but I do, I don't want what's called chatter. So when you look at sort of traditional rustic lino cut, sometimes people will leave the, some of the lines behind from where they've carved. And that definitely has a place in some, some images because you can get some really nice effects by leaving those lines there. But because our source image that we're using today is, um, clearly a white, branch possibly a snowy branch I'm not entirely sure um, but it's the white of the paper so we don't want what's called chatter we don't want any of that left behind so with the the U tool uh, as I'm taking those away I'm going to be very um, deep about it and clear those edges away you'll notice that I'm rotating the uh, lino rather than uh, myself or my hands I want to keep the um, tool facing away um, and I want the most natural um, feel to being able to carve as possible rather than twisting my body or my hands around a bend I will move the lino so that it makes it a lot more easy. So if you feel confident now you've been doing the uh, V gouge, you can try using the Hangito if you have one. If you're using the set, um, you can use the one that comes in your uh, five tool set. Um, the lines I'm doing right now, uh, you can still do uh, with the smallest V, but I'm using this one here just to demonstrate um, how I would use it. So if you think about um, a scalpel that we would be quite used to in uh, in in the West and you are cutting in from one side turning it around and cutting in from the other side so a little bit like making a V um, that you would with the V tool now what you get with this is where some of this design is quite jaggedy in places um, you get a very fine line so these small areas around the crow's back um, that are still going to be white areas, I am creating my trench by creating that very fine line using the hangito and then going in with either my V or my U tool. I'm relatively new to using um, the hangito. I uh, don't even hold it um, in, the, in the traditional uh, method. Um, but I've sort of teetered around using it for years, um, watching it being used uh, primarily in woodblock uh, printmaking. And, you know, it comes in lino sets or woodcut sets often. Um, so it's nice to try it out, get some of those fine lines and also demonstrate it today with you. Um, I'm getting more used to using it. I definitely recommend it for 
for the fine fineness of the lines um, particularly when I want to go around the feet of this crow I definitely recommend um, checking out several different ways of people approaching a reduction liner cut um, the more you watch it being done the more it will inform on your decision around when to use reduction for a particular design Obviously, one of the downsides with reduction is that you're only going to get a certain series of prints uh, before you have destroyed your lino. So, for instance, when we go to, uh, when we finish carving all these white areas away and we are set up with our paper, our ink, we are only, what we print with that white is the addition the amount in the addition that we're going to end up with. And if we wanted an addition of 20, because we've decided um, that's all this design is going to do, is I would sometimes, depending on your experience, I would probably try for an addition of 25. And then you'll perhaps um, have some errors or some problems. Um, and by that, that point, it will reduce down to 20. Or bear in mind that if you go for a, a, an addition of 20, you might actually come out with 19, 18, um, hopefully not less. When those first 20 are dry, so um, when we come to ink up uh, to show our white areas, and we ink up with the yellow and we've got 20 uh, drying, um, and we've started to carve our next layer while those are drying, uh, we're then going to be carving away all of our yellow because yellow is what we've got drying on our paper over there and we're no longer going to need that part of our plate, our lino plate. Uh, so we're going to be getting rid of all of the yellow areas to just reveal those areas that we want black. And then we will ink up those areas that are black um, and we will print them on our probably dried <laughs> yellow surface that we've had drying in our 20 and hopefully no further issues or problems to reduce those 20 or that 19 or that 18 and um, perhaps we might even come away with 20 perfect prints. So where you can see that I've carved away um, the majority of this branch that we're actually going to be showing as the white of our paper once we've printed the yellow down. When I was talking about chatter, this is where you can see that um, had we wanted to have, uh, say, the texture or the line of our wood um, from our branch, we could use um, the, the chatter to indicate that texture. So on this particular design, we are carving it all away because it's a perfect white in the design. But um, in your design or whatever you might be um, carving, you might want to leave some of that chatter to add that texture to your image. And, and that's what I was talking about earlier.
Now that we've carved away enough for our first print, we need to take a look at the paper we're going to use. This piece of lino is approximately 148 by 210 mil, 5.8 uh, by 8.3 inches. We're going to be using hand burnishing to transfer ink to our paper today and with this design having some fine details I've chosen to use this 35 GSM Sumi Rice paper pad. It's around 20 pence a sheet, uh, it's quite light and absorbent, uh, great for hand burnishing. I tend to print on the smooth side but depending on your design it equally prints on the textured side. This piece of MDF is my registration. You don't have to use MDF, you can use a piece of paper or card, but because I like an L support, I have used lino offcuts, glued them to a spare piece of MDF, and it's perfect for these sized prints. The hand burnishing baron I'm using is a traditional Japanese baron. You can purchase student barons um, quite cheaply. This one has a tighter coil inside and is great for picking up fine details without the extra effort. You can see that it's a little thicker than the student baron. Uh, this one on the right is a student baron. The one on the left is the one that I generally use. There isn't a great deal of difference between them. Um, maybe about 30 quids difference. Um, but I prefer the thickness of the one on the left. All of the materials we're using today are available in our shop. Right, we need to get our paper registration set up and to do this I am going to be using turns, Burton pins and tabs. I am going to measure my paper up against uh, the lino and find the best spot at the top of the MDF to place my pins. Turns Burton pins, um, these are, I'm not sure what they're made out of, they're fairly sturdy um, and reusable. So they stay at the top of your registration and these tabs are what are going to be on your paper and these remain on your paper um, all the way through all of your um, printing. You don't want them too close to the lino. Um, on this occasion I'm going to tape my uh, tabs just a little bit further up on the MDF. We could do with the MDF being a tiny bit bigger um, but it is what it is, we've got it. Um, once we've put some masking tape and got the pins on the MDF we will measure up our paper um, and we will attach our tabs to our paper, each individual sheet. As I said before, if you're going to go for 20, then you're going to need 40 of these tabs because you use two per piece of paper.
The inks we are using are Printmaker's inks by Cranfield. These are Caligo Safe Wash. They're oil based um, but they clean up with soap and water. I'm going to be mixing process red, process yellow and some opaque white for this colour layer. I've pre-mixed the colour and just as in uh, beginner's liner cut you're looking for a tacky sound when rolling the ink onto the lino, uh, not too sloppy, uh, nice even inking all over. Um, I very rarely um, will pick up more ink, I will try and roll most of the ink that I've got on the roller across the lino, especially for a piece this size. Before you put your lino onto your registration, get your paper and just clip it in at the top, ready, and just flip it over. Um, you can probably see now why we put them so far up. And then just bring your paper down and just let it fall where it wants to fall and just apply a, a very small amount of pressure. There's a whole variety of things out there that you can use as burnishers. Uh, some people use wooden spoons, metal spoons, um, in some of our kits we'll sometimes provide these wooden bone folders um, the surface area of the side of it makes quite a good uh, burnisher and then you've got some um, pointy ends which will allow you to get a little bit of detail or around the edges um, it does just take a little bit of extra um, burnishing when you're using something like this or a spoon um, I'm not a big fan of the spoon, I find it leaves circles, um, I'll use this or the uh, Baron that we were talking about earlier. I'm quite happy with that print, uh, there's a bit of pencil mark come through, forgot to rub that off the lino, uh, that will, I can either clean up this lino and get rid of it or it will probably fade after about three or four prints. We're doing a black layer last so I can't imagine that it will be a problem. So if we demonstrate the Baron that I'm used to using, you don't have to apply as much pressure. Um, as you would if you were using a spoon or the bone folder. Um, nice sweeping circular motions, you'll be able to feel the ridges underneath your hand um, and you'll know where the detail is and where you want to um, concentrate over a little bit more. If you see the ink coming through the paper then you can just get a piece of newsprint or greaseproof paper, place that over your rice paper and then burnish the back of your greaseproof or newsprint paper. Again, nice print, that pencil's fading already. So for this workshop we have concentrated on hand burnishing um, rather than using a press. It's a much more accessible way to do it from home, a lot cheaper. But if you decide to move on and perhaps you are running a large series of prints, and um, it's getting a little bit too much with the hand burnishing and you want to try a press, uh, you're looking at spending new anywhere between 250 and 350. 
Um, you can buy them as a lever press. This is where one plate comes over on top of the other to apply the pressure via you pressing down on a bar. Um, and when you release that pressure, then you're releasing um, the plate. Or the uh, nipping press. This is designed on the old fashioned book press where you're spinning the handle down to bring the plate down on top of the other one. Um, the advantage of those is that you can uh, leave it there for a moment without having to constantly uh, push down on that pressure. Um, both options um, are really suitable for small prints. Um, I find with the lever uh, presses, the ones like the Pookie Press or the Woodzilla, um, I quite like the smaller ones for those because the bar that is coming across to apply the pressure is applying that pressure to a smaller surface area so you're more likely to get a, an even print. The larger it gets the more you're probably then going to have to follow up with a hand burnish. I'll put some links at the end of this video for where you can, um, where you can purchase these things. You'll notice the lino is now looking fairly bare of, um, of our lino and that is because after printing our yellow layer I've cleaned the lino off and you can do that with um, uh, a cloth uh, with some um, a mild detergent um, or a wet wipe something like that and then once it's dry I have carved away all of the areas um, that we have just printed yellow. So what I'm going to be doing now is I will be applying the black um, to this layer and I will then be placing our pre-printed paper over the top of this and hand burnishing again and that will be our last layer. You've probably noticed that um, when we were inking up and rolling our yellow layer that we were using quite a large roller compared to the one that we're going to use now. When you have a larger surface area to um, roll the ink then you would use as the biggest roller that you've got um, to be able to get a nice even ink coverage. Now because we uh, don't want to be ro rolling a huge um, roller of black ink and catching all that chatter, uh, those ridges, um, I am using a, um, a two and a half inch uh, roller. Uh, these are the soft rollers and um, what will happen after these first few prints is if I have my ridges too high then when I go to print it, um, it's going to leave that, uh, those ridges black across areas that I don't want it to. So after the first or maybe second print, you'll notice that we'll start carving away those ridges to make it a much neater print. Again, like I said before, if it suits your design, um, then you can incorporate that in to your artwork. Uh, for this particular one, we're looking for a nice clean transfer of the black in just those areas. I 
I hope that you've enjoyed this workshop as much as I have uh, putting it together for you. Um, and if you have um, chosen to do this print along with me, then I would love to see your prints. Uh, you can either tag us on social media and we are at Ikigai Printmaking. Um, or you can just email me and if you have any um, issues you want to troubleshoot then you'll find us on info at ikigaiprint.com um, We are also on Patreon and for a small amount per month you can join as a member and have access to much more um, content uh, there'll be some demonstrations uh, we may troubleshoot some issues and we're going to be covering some other printmaking uh, techniques so if you have come across this video um, on anywhere else than patreon then do come over to patreon and uh, join the club and see what else we've got going on over there so that's it from me and I hope you really enjoyed that uh, reduction lino cut workshop and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.